Haitian lives matter. Immigrants are welcome here. 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 Alright everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. First off, we have a speaker here. This is Julia. She's gonna give a speech to start off the evening. So please give it up for her. historical context, because as usual, history leads us to the current day. So there are two points that are really important to understand the context of the current Haitian immigration crisis. The first is that the United States has a long history of meddling in Haiti. That's right. And the second is that US meddling has directly caused much of the national instability and gang violence faced by Haitian people today. Exactly. While Haiti has done much to help the United States over the years, the United States has worked to undermine Haiti since it was officially recognized as a nation in 1804. The U.S. partook in an embargo with France, which devastated the export-driven economy of the new nation. Hold on. Is it all right if I remove my mask? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Glasses keep fogging. Fast forward to 1915. The U.S. occupied Haiti from 1915 to 1934 under the guise of restoring democracy following the assassination of Haiti, or Haiti's president. In reality, the U.S. wanted to utilize Haiti as a strategic location, preventing the perceived threat of Germany doing the same thing and exploit Haiti's agricultural lands, forests, resources, and the Haitian workforce. This led to land theft from over 40,000 Haitians as the U.S. aggregated land for agribusiness ventures, caused the largest deforestation event in Haitian history, and the U.S. created and trained the modern Haitian police and military force, who were then used by the United States and then the Duvalier dictators to murder thousands. In 1991, following the fall of Jean-Claude Duval Duvalier in 1986, the first truly democratically elected president of Haiti, Aristide, was ousted from power by Haitian elites, the corrupt military and political officials that were in power under the Duvaliers, and all of this was backed by the US CIA. This threw the country into turmoil in a time when Haiti finally had a president who was there for the people. Haitian immigration to the U.S. began in earnest in 1965, following the Hart Seller Immigration Act, which abolished racist national origin quotas, which had been part of U.S. immigration policy since the 1920s. Following the violence and instability in Haiti after Aristide was ousted, immigration to the U.S. spiked, which is what caused the Clinton, Clinton administration to reinstate Aristide to the presidency, albeit with neoliberal clauses that prohibited the structural reforms Aristide wanted to implement and furthered U.S. economic gains in Haiti. Haitian migration again spiked in 2010 following the horrific earthquake that killed hundreds of thousands of Haitian citizens. Many refugees went to Brazil and then Chile, but conditions in both countries worsened for Haitian immigrants over time, causing tens of thousands to begin the journey to the U.S.-Mexico border. Haitian people have continued to seek asylum in the U.S. and other countries since 2010, as Haiti has faced more ecological and political crises, including the appointment of the recently assassinated dictator, Jovenel Moise, put in power by the Obama administration. 
Just tell me how someone with no political experience wins an election with 500,000 votes in a country of over 12 million people. <laughs> it, exactly. He doesn't, he gets put in power. Exactly, that's right. Um, many Haitian asylum seekers have been stuck at the border for years, awaiting a decision, stuck in dangerous border towns in Mexico that are flooded with guns from the United States, that are smuggled into Mexico and to the Mexican gangs. Trump invoked Title 42 during COVID, prohibiting asylum seekers from even entering the country. Biden has kept this in place and has deported more Haitian citizens since the start of 2021 than Trump did in the entire fiscal year of 2020. There have been over 37 deportation flights under Biden, not including flights that contain over 2,000 people from the Del Rio camp. So that is a little bit of context to kind of kick us off. And I'm going to hand over the mic now. All right, give it up for Julia. Woo! Thank you so much. It's important to remember the context, not just historically, but also right now. There are dozens of similar events being held across the country in, in cities all over America. So give it up for yourself for being a part of this. Excellent. Another chant. Uh, Vermont will fight for immigrant rights. 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 All right, next up on our roster, we have Friska here. So please give it up for her. Ago on August 14, 2021. These people are at the 
order and they can't speak for themselves because they took their voices away and they are being treated terribly. It is extremely cruel and inhumane. We need to be their voices on the outside because they can't speak for themselves on the inside. That's right. Woo! Excellent job. Thank you so much, Priska. So before we move on, I just want to share the demands that we have here, the reason that we're out here. So we have five demands here. And on the flyers, you can have, there, there's a little QR code. You can send a letter to Vermont politicians to share them or share with them these demands. Number one. Stop racist treatment of Haitian migrants. Number two, stop all detentions on the border and around the country. Number three, end the militarization of the border. Number four, Thank you, Mr. Helicopter. Defund and demolish the Border Patrol, ICE, and the police, and dismantle DHS. And then number five, close Willington's ICE, da ICE data facility that upholds the biased surveillance state of immigration. Okay, next up, we have Rosie from Migrant Justice, and we have Madeline who will be interpreting. Hola, mi nombre es Rosie Alfaro. Soy de la organización de Justicia Migrante. Justicia es una organización que está creada y liderada por la comunidad migrante que lucha por los derechos humanos. Estamos aquí en solidaridad con la, comunidad, con la comunidad haitiana porque nos identificamos con ellos por el hecho de ser migrantes y tener que salir de nuestros países y llegar a un país donde no somos bienvenidos y a veces tener que sufrir racismo y vivir todo el tiempo con el miedo de ser deportados. Y eso no es justo. Nosotros merecemos una vida diferente. También la, comuni la comunidad haitiana, porque también merecen respeto, dignidad y la oportunidad de tener una vida mejor. ¡Eso! So to translate, hello, my name is Rosie Alfaro. I'm part of the organization Migrant Justice. Migrant Justice is an organization that, is create, that was created and is led by the migrant community that fights for human rights. We are here in solidarity with the Haitian community because we identify with them uh, for the fact that we are also migrants um, and that we have had to, to leave our, own, our home country and come to a country where we are not welcome. And sometimes we face racism here, and we have to live all the time with the fear of being deported. We know that this isn't right. This isn't just. We deserve a different life. And also, the Haitian community deserves respect and dignity and the opportunity to have a better life. I'm Ashley Smith. I'm from Community Voices for Immigrant Rights. 
I'm sure you share with me a sense of horror about what the Biden administration did at the U.S.-Mexico border in Del Rio, Texas. He committed a crime against humanity. He unleashed Border Patrol and ICE to clear out the camp. And I don't think we've seen scenes like this, even under the Trump administration, of Border Patrol acting like a slave catcher, whipping and beating and driving Haitian migrants across the border back into Mexico. The shocking thing is that Biden had the gall to criticize the Border Patrol that he ordered to do exactly what they did. This is what ICE and Border Patrol do on the U.S.-Mexico border. This is what ICE and Border Patrol do on the Vermont-Quebec border. This is what ICE does across the country. You cannot criticize the behavior of the agents you order to commit crimes against humanity. The guilt lies with the Biden administration. Biden has now cleared 16,000 people driving most of them back into Mexico, where conditions are just as bad, if not worse, for the Haitian migrants. The Mexican police are terrorizing the Haitian migrants, just like the U.S. police, ICE, and Border Patrol were terrorizing Haitian migrants on the U.S. side of the, of the border. And Biden has ordered the Mexican state to deploy its police and military to its southern border to back block the passage of thousands of more Haitians coming to the United States. And the question is, why are these people fleeing? Why are they coming from Haiti? Why are they coming from all over Latin America? And the reality is, you have to look for the fault, not in those countries, but right here in the United States. And not only in this country, but here in the state of Vermont. Washington has backed coups in Haiti, blocked social reform, and set the country up to be unable to withstand to the natural disasters, the earthquakes and hurricanes that have ravaged the country. The fault for those natural disasters is actually in Washington. It's not really in nature itself because the state was unable to respond to the human crisis. They didn't have social reforms and able to improve people's lives. So those natural disasters became unnatural ones wrought by U.S. imperialism. And those same forces are what are driving Haitians from Latin America, devastated economies, coups and right-wing governments backed by the United States, and an economic catastrophe in part caused by the pandemic and made worse by the fact that the U.S. government is hoarding vaccinations from third world countries, especially in Latin America. As a result, the economic conditions are worse there. That's why Haitians are coming to the U.S.-Mexico border trying to find asylum. And instead of giving them asylum, which is an internationally recognized human right, the Biden administration used Trump's Title 42 to shut down the border and unleash these goons against the Haitian migrants. So in that context, we demand, stop the racist treatment of Haitian migrants. Stop all deportations. End the militarization of the U.S.-Mexico border and the U.S.-Vermont border with, with Quebec. Abolish Border Patrol, ICE, and DHS. Open the borders. Let every human being in. And this is particularly important in Vermont because a lot of people don't know about it, but the data facility that ICE has out in Williston is the national nerve center for all the monitoring and collection of data on undocumented migrants from all across the country. And the person who brought it here is up in that office. Patrick Leahy. So contrary to the illusion that we have a wonderful liberal delegation, Patrick Leahy is responsible for some of those atrocities that are happening. That's why everybody should join us in demanding that Leahy, Sanders, and Welch, and all the politicians in the state support the demands of this protest. We have to, we have to recognize we have reparations to pay to Haiti and Haitians from the U.S. government and from the Vermont government. They deserve nothing less.
So I'll just conclude by saying if you want to continue this struggle, get involved up at campus, and if you're in the community, come to the next Community Voices for Immigrant Rights meeting where we'll talk about where we go from here in building a movement that will stand up and say, no human being is illegal. Haitian lives matter. 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 Woo! Haitian lives Give it up for Ashley. Matter. Haitian lives matter. Before we move on, we have another chance. What do we want? Migrant justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Migrant justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Migrant justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Migrant justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Migrant justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Migrant justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Migrant justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Migrant justice. When do we want it? Now. Up next, we've got Trey from the YDSA. Good for him. The Young Democratic Socialists of America condemns uh, in the strongest possible terms the inhumane treatment of the asylum seekers currently stuck under the bridge in Del Rio, Texas. These migrants have been forced to wait in makeshift camps after crossing the Rio Grande for their petitions to be processed with little food, water, medicine, or shelter from the elements. They've also endured anti-black violence at the hands of Customs and Border Patrol, with reported shouts of go back to Mexico coming from the officers themselves, despite many of the migrants originating from Haiti, further adding to the erasure of black immigrants in the discussion around immigration. In May, the administration ruled that people coming from the U.S. and coming to the U.S. from Haiti would be granted a TPS designation due to the ongoing political unrest and climate disasters. We know these crises are rooted in U.S. imperialism and Western colonization. Instead of receiving them with dignity, 86 people were deported under Title 42, and there are more flights scheduled to depart this week. The deportation flights must end. Border pat patrol must be demilitarized, and these migrants must be allowed in. They should be allowed to petition for asylum for the violence they are fleeing. We reaffirm our position that ICE and CPB serve no purpose other than to enact racist violence in the name of xenophobic policies designated to force people from the global south into permanently maintained exploitable underclasses. We call for these policies and agencies that force them to be defunded, disarmed, and dismantled. Time and time again, the U.S. has shown its disregard for these humans, for the humane treatment of asylum seekers and migrants. And uh, with the reconciliation bill passed in this week with no clear path to citizenship for these people, it's important that we get organized in our community. Hit all the same demands that we talked about earlier. You need to get the uh, ICE data center, get out of here. We need to pressure Leahy. And if you're a student that wants to get involved, come talk to us. The Young Democratic Socialists of America at UVM. Thank you very much. Excellent speech, Trey. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, so I am Miguel, I'm from the RSU, and I just want to make one point here uh, crystal clear. I'm Chilean, I'm from Latin America, I have a deep connection to the global south, and I am very aware of the way that the United States and other colonial states exploit the global south. The main purpose of military intervention in Latin America, CIA intervention in Latin America, is to exploit natural resources and cheap labor. That's why we're there. That's why we were there for Operation Condor. That's why we're trying to send all these migrants back now. It's for exploitation, for the shareholders. In Chile we say, que muevan las industrias, that the industries may move. Leahy is a cog in a machine. And that machine continues to exploit Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, all the global south for its nefarious purposes. So I wanted to make that absolutely clear, that we're here fighting a machine, not specific policies, not one action, one horrible atrocity by certain ICE agents, but the whole entire system, it needs to come down. Thank you. Woo! Woo!
And then our next speaker is Jess. Can you hear me okay with my mask on? Okay. Yep. Um, I'm Jess, and um, I'm speaking today as somebody who has the honor and the opportunity to organize with Community Voices for Immigrant Rights from time to time. Oh, is it off? Is it not working? Yeah, just use this one. I'll just use it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, hopefully I'll keep it close and we'll stay. Um, I organize from time to time with Community Voices for Immigrant Rights, and I really respect this consistent presence here in the community in Burlington and beyond across the state, continuing to raise these issues and work in coalition with a lot of different groups. And um, back in March, we had a honk protest. And when, when what was happening on the border started to unfold last week, I didn't have the emotional capacity or the mental capacity to think about action. Yeah. And that's why these consistent groups in the community are so important, that there are people who come together who talk regularly about what's happening for immigrants in our communities and that they're ready to take action. And so I get to just speak here today for a little bit <laughs> about what I think about what's happening on the border and why we all need to be more engaged in this fight. Um, I think a lot of the conversation in the past two weeks has focused on the conditions in Haiti, conditions that have been created and perpetuated by the US government, mm -hmm. conditions in Chile and Brazil that have also been perpetuated by the US government. That's right, that's right. And I can definitely add plenty of imagery to that conversation. I lived in Haiti at the height of the migration to South America. And I can tell you that today in Haiti, the situation is much more dire. Yeah. Economically, human rights violations, rampant gang violence and kidnappings, and the earthquake in the Southern Peninsula, yeah. where aid is being blocked by gangs to get to people who are in need. So yes, the situation in Haiti is dire. But we need to change our rhetoric around immigration from just focusing on the situation that we are deporting people to and not actually asking ourselves why we are not granting asylum to folks, That's why right. our systems aren't working, why the Biden and Harris administration haven't rebuilt U.S. immigration. And, and I hope everyone here is clear that immigration in the U.S has always been racist. That's, That's right. right. Woo. It is why we cannot have our police collaborating with ICE because they use racial profiling right. to target our community members and our neighbors. So what's happening on the border is really an exposure of what has always been true about the U.S. immigration system. And the situation that they're deporting people back into in Haiti is deplorable. But what we have to focus on as U.S. residents and citizens is actually holding our elected officials accountable. Yeah. We have to say no to people who are, who are running their political campaigns on making immigration more humane while maintaining camps on the border, while exactly. militarizing the border patrol. And the city of Del Rio used their police department and yep. neighboring cities' departments to reinforce a wall to ensure that if any of the border patrol, and if anyone got past the border patrol, they wouldn't get into their cities. We have to abolish the police. We have to abolish ICE. We have to stop the inhumane detention of people all across our country. That's right. That's right. Because we know that in all of these institutions, they are wrong from the start. And we know that they are constantly employed against people of color and black people disproportionately. That's right. Yeah. So, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> um, so I'm standing here because I think that we all have to remember when these crises happen 
that it isn't just about painting a picture of these other countries that have been controlled by the U.S. and completely dismantled by the U.S. We have to shine the mirror. We have to uh, face the mirror back to ourselves right. and to our institutions. And here in Vermont, in Williston, housing the DHS like nerve center for data is deplorable. That's right. Leahy brought the F-35s here, he brought that here, That's and we right. have to be willing to do what it takes to escalate the conversation, to force him and Sanders and Welch to stand, to stand up for immigrant rights and to stand up for black immigrants. The, the last thing that I've been thinking a lot about um, that as I hear all the reports is how often we focus on women and children. We focus on the fact that people aren't criminals. Well, our society has decided to criminalize being black and brown. That's right. Since its foundation. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to base our immigration and our progressive values off of people not being criminals, then we aren't recognizing the system that is disproportionately right. going to seek out and find black and brown migrants across this country to deport. That's right. We have to change our focus not because women and children don't matter, but because every migrant matters. That's right. Every migrant matters. It's not because we're going to pay taxes here. It's not because they have small children that are vulnerable. It's because they are humans. That's exactly. right. And we have to remember their humanity in anything that we have to say. All migrants matter. Thank you. Jess surprised me. I thought she was going to conclude and tell people what to do. So <laughs> she's, she's asked me to do that. So just the specific things. Everybody got a flyer tonight. There, if you go follow that Q code, is that what it's called? QR. QR code. It takes you to a Google Doc that you can turn into a letter to send to all, all the politicians in the state, our congressional delegation, local politicians, state representatives. So we encourage you all to do that. There are several students from UVM. If you're an unorganized UVM student, please come and talk to Miguel. Raise your hand. Where Miguel and the YDSA crew over here, Trey, um, come talk to them. And again, people in the community, we encourage you to come to the Community Voices for Immigrant Rights meeting, which will be a week from this Thursday at 6 o'clock. We'll post it on our uh, uh, Facebook page. Yes, we use Facebook still. Um, so check that out and come to the meeting and we're gonna talk there about how we can escalate the struggle because this is not over. Tens of thousands of Haitians are still in Mexico. More are coming up from Latin America and they're being blocked at the borders. So this crisis is not over despite what the media says. So we have to figure out what our response is and how we can escalate the pressure on our politicians to do something to let people in and let them stay in the US regardless of their nationality. So we encourage you to come to that meeting and we'll talk about future actions that we can plan, further teach-ins and more demonstrations to put up the pressure so that all lives are matter, especially black lives, especially Haitian lives, because nobody's life matter until Haitian black lives matter along with everybody else. So let's stand up, unite, and fight together so that everybody has equal rights and justice in this country and around the world. Woo!